Hello, welcome to this lesson in Mastering Statistics. Hopefully by now you've started to see the usefulness of something like the Central Limit Theorem. It really allows you to solve problems uh, that, uh, that seem to be very complicated at first, but in fact become quite easy. There are not too many mathematical steps involved, but we just need to know what to do and get practice with it. So let's continue that practice now. 47% uh, of people in a city want to buy a bike. All right. If we survey 61 people at random, what is the probability that less than 40% of those people want to buy a bike? All right. So this is the kind of common thing that you'll see. And at first we're given information about the population. We're told that 47% of people in the city want to buy a bike. How could you possibly know that? Right. Well, usually broad data like that regarding a population uh, might be something that's been published by a larger study in the past. You know, uh, maybe they studied lots and lots of people. Maybe they took a survey during the last census or something about people who wanted to buy a bike. But they know somehow that 47% of the people in the city uh, want to buy a bike. All right, so now we want to know, if I go survey people at random, in this case I'm surveying 61 people, um, what is the probability that less than 40% of those people want to buy a bike? So we have information about the population proportion, 47%. We have information about the sample proportion that we care about because we know it's, uh, it's uh, 40% uh, in regards to the sample size, which is 61. So let's put this information uh, on the board. All right, and try to get some, get some you know, practice with it. So the first thing we want to notice is that the sample size is given in the problem as 61 because it says we survey 61 people, right? Then the population proportion is also given to us as 47%, but you know, we never write it as percentages in our calculation, so I want you to get in the habit of putting 0 0.47, move the decimal point two times. We're also told that the uh, sample proportion that we're interested in investigating is, is what is the probability that less than 40% of that sample. So the sample proportion is 40%, but again, we don't write it that way. We put 0 0.40. So we have the relevant information up on the board. And before we go any further, I want to verify that this problem uh, can produce a sampling distribution of sample proportions that looks normal. So you want to just verify that. And the first constraint is that n times p is greater than or equal to 5. All right. Um, so what we have is n, which is 61, times p, which is 0.47. And when you do that calculation, you get 28.7, which is greater than or equal to 5. So we put a check mark there and say, OK, we understand that that's right. And then let's check the other part of it, which is n times 1 minus p. It also has to be greater than or equal to 5. So n is 61, 1 minus p is 1 minus 